Hello and welcome to this video course on how to use WordPress Gutenberg editor. So we're going to go in depth. So if you don't know how to use the editor and you know a little bit, we're going to dive in a lot deeper. So this is video number one, which is the introduction. So let's talk about Gutenberg and a little bit about it. Gutenberg was created as more of a drag and drop dynamic editor. Now there are pros and cons. So I want to make sure that you are able to see both sides. Some of the pros include the following. Number one, it provides more screen space. Number two, it's more dynamic with blocks. And number three, blocks are fun to use. So when I talk about blocks, I'm talking about image blocks, audio blocks, and different types of blocks that fit different media. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. And what's cool about this is you can drag and drop them. You can move them around very, very easily. And number four, it also works great on mobile. Now the primary con or disadvantage is that although it's listed as beginner friendly, <laughs> the reality is that it has so many options that it can get really quite confusing. And that is why we will go over most of the important areas in this video course. With that said, I like to give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course so you know exactly what to expect. So this is video number one, obviously video number two, we're going to give you a quick overview of the user interface. Video number three, we're going to talk about the different types of blocks so that you're aware of the many blocks that are available to you. Video number four, we'll talk about using the sidebar, which is on the right hand side that pertains to each block. And number five, we'll talk about common blocks that are available to you. And of course, video number six, we'll talk about formatting blocks. So as you can see here, I'm breaking it up into simplified videos. I don't want to put all of these into one video to overwhelm you. All right. So video number seven, we'll talk about layout elements and video number eight. We'll talk about if you're not ready for Gutenberg and you do not like the editor after you've seen all of this, how do you go about disabling it? How do you go about reverting to the old classic editor? And this is a big thing. A lot of people, do not like Gutenberg. So they prefer to go back to the classic editor. So we want to make sure that you have the options available to you if you choose to go down that route. And of course, last but not least, we've got video number nine, which is more editor options. In terms of getting started, it's pretty self-explanatory. All you need to have is a WordPress site with administrator access because we are going to log in to the WordPress administrator dashboard and I'll show you around. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two and we're going to talk about a quick overview of the user interface. So before we jump in, I want to say that it's important to give you a quick overview of the Gutenberg editor so that you know exactly what to expect. You know how everything is broken down. You know how everything, where things are accessible and all of that. So with that said, let's go ahead and go to a WordPress dashboard and I'll show you around. Okay. So one thing I want to make note of is you should get access to a WordPress web hosting company if you are using WordPress. Because as you expand and you use WordPress more, WordPress will actually become slower if you are not using a WordPress host that have their servers that are basically set up for WordPress. There is a specific web host that I highly recommend called WPXhosting.com. And this is a site that I use and it's, they got fantastic support. A lot of times you can email them with WordPress related questions and they'll respond. Sometimes they'll log into your account and do it for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and log in and I'm going to find a test site that we can use. 
and we'll see you in the dashboard. Okay, so here we are at the WordPress administrator dashboard. What you want to do is you want to go to a post or a page. It really doesn't matter what you use. So you can either go to posts, you can click add new, or you can go to all posts and find a post, an existing post, and edit that. It doesn't really matter. So we are going to create a post in terms of this example. And to do that, we'll click on add new. Okay, so the way things are laid out is once you have gotten in here, this right here is the Gutenberg editor. Now, when you click on the plus sign here, you're going to be able to see blocks. So as you can see, there are many different types of blocks, which we will go into every single block in the future videos. But for now, this is where the blocks are. Now, you can click this here and this will give you the content structure. So it's kind of like if you think about it, Microsoft Word, when they tell you how many words you have, how many paragraphs you have, but in this case, how many blocks you have and how many headings you have. So this is really great if you're wondering, okay, how many words do I have? And if you're writing an article and you're trying to stick with a certain amount of words, this is really great to have. And then of course we have this here, which is the block navigation. So as you begin to add more blocks, it will add those blocks here. So right now, as you can see, there is simply just a heading block right here. So all you have to do is type in the title. So title here, and then you can put the heading. So the title here will actually become your page title. And then the heading here will actually become your post or page. So in other words, if I name this title here and I click on publish, what's going to happen is the permalinks, it will change to yourdomain.com slash title dash here. So if I had the word, this is a great day, this is a great day, then what will happen is when I click publish, it'll create yourdomain.com slash this is a great day. All right. So that's what I mean by page title. And that's the difference between this and this. All right. Now I'm not going to go into too much depth because I don't want to overwhelm you. We're going to dive in at a later time. So if we move on over here, this is the sidebar. This allows you to control permalinks, categories, tags, and, and other features as well. And you'll begin to see as I begin to edit blocks and add blocks and all of that, the sidebar will actually change. All right. So this is a basic and brief overview of all the details. Now over here we have blocks. So if you click on block, uh, whatever block you select, like let's say for example, the heading here, you'll see the actual details here. All right. So that's it for now. We'll keep it simple and we'll move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three, and we're going to talk about understanding the types of blocks. So let's talk about the different types of blocks so that you can kind of get a bird's eye view of the options that are available to you. All right. So we'll cover all the sections, but we won't actually go in depth as much as we will in the future videos. All right. Okay. So if we return over here to access the blocks, you will need to simply click on the circle with a plus. So click on here and you'll see the most used blocks. So you can see they have paragraph, they have image, they have heading, they have gallery, they have lists, they have quote, they have file, they have cover and they have audio. Now these are just the most used. So a lot of these can actually be in some of these. Now, if you think about an editor, and you think about the classic editor, there was only really so much that you could do. So the reason why they switched over to Gutenberg is it really expands the ability to add more content types 
add more media types with ease of use. And that was really the whole goal. So sometimes you start out with Gutenberg, it's really frustrating, but I guarantee if you finish it, you might really like it. So then we have common blocks. Then we have, as you can see here, uh, a lot of them are actually similar to the most used blocks. So these are common blocks. So you can see some media like audio, video, cover, file, gallery, list, and quote. So a lot that we actually went over earlier. And then of course you got formatting blocks. You've got code, classic, custom HTML, table, pull quote, pre-formatted, verse. And then of course you have layout elements. Then you have buttons, columns, media and text, more page break, separator, and spacer. So in other words, the layout elements allow you to move things around so that it looks better. And we have widgets, we have the short code, we have archives, calendar, latest posts, latest comments, categories, RSS, search, and tag cloud. And then of course we have embed. So this would be something that you would use if you have, say for example, a YouTube video. You could come here, you could click on the YouTube icon here and embed a video. So same with these other ones. You got embed, you have Twitter, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you can embed these. So this is great to have, especially as you're trying to build your social media and trying to get people to your social media properties. So we've got Vimeo, which is a video hosting site, kind of similar to YouTube. We have Animoto, which is a video creation site. And we've got uh, a lot of other sites as well. So we're not gonna dive too much into these, but these are more of the third-party sites that you can use if you happen to have accounts for these. So if you have Reddit, you have Tumblr, you have Amazon Kindle, you could post these widgets and embeds here. So we pretty much covered most of blocks. Now, in terms of adding blocks, all right, so if we click here and we can edit things here, if you put your mouse over the bottom or even the top, you will see an additional plus sign. All right, so see that plus sign here? What that means is you can insert a block in between this block and this block. So if you just wanna continue adding blocks down below, that's great, right? But if you're thinking, oh, I missed a block, I wanted to add an image between this block and this block, that allows you to do that. So if you think about the old classic editor, you would not really be able to do that as easily. You could uh, go down and grab the content and then move it around, but it, it would end up really becoming tedious. So the goal of this is to try and make your life a lot easier. Now, there is a full screen mode. If you click on the dot, dot, dot here, you can click on full screen mode and that will basically expand it so that you can see the editor. You don't have to see the left sidebar or anything like that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to keep it like this so that we don't really have anything like distracting us, all right? So as an example, if we click plus here and let's say that we want a list. So we can put a list here, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then we're thinking, okay, I wanna add an additional block. So I'm gonna click this here and I'll add a quote. This is a quote. Now, another thing to note is that if you wanna move things around, you're gonna see, and you put your mouse over the left-hand side, you're gonna see these arrows. So if you press these arrows, it will move it down one block, or you can simply move this one down below this block, as you can see here. 
Now, what this is, this little six dots, it's the same as these, except for it's more of a kind of a drag friendly thing. So you can, as you can see here, I can just drag things around. So it's really not different. It's just the way that they've done it is differently. Okay, so let's say we want to add something else. So we're gonna we're gonna click here. So you can also click here if you want to, but this option gives you the ability to click here and add a block. And if you click over here, you can add a block as well. So you'll notice that it kind of gives you some flexibility on where you can click. So I could click here and I could click, let's say, We'll go to common blocks and we'll choose, let's say a gallery. So a gallery is basically a bunch of images that are showcased. So if you upload, say 10 different videos, then you can organize them so that everyone can see them basically on a wall. What's nice about this is back in the day, you could create galleries, but it's a lot more simplified. So you can click media library, you can choose the photos that you want and select them. Now, as you can see here, you can also transform these blocks into an image, which is pretty cool. So if you have a bunch of gallery images already, but you're thinking, well, I wanna switch this to just a single image, you can do that as well. So in certain respects, you can even morph certain blocks into other blocks. So another thing is you can align. So you can align left, you can align center, and you can align right. Now, if you click on these dot, 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 this is basically more options. You can hide block settings, which are on the right-hand side. So if I click that, you can see that I'm able to see just the editor itself. So. If that's annoying me, I can literally remove that, but honestly, it really depends on you. So if you click show block settings, the right-hand sidebar will appear again. All right, so that's a little, little tweak. Now, if you wanna duplicate something that you have created, let's say we have a gallery and we really like the gallery, but we wanna add the gallery at the very bottom, we can do that as well. So to do that, you would simply click that block, click on the more options and click on duplicate. And as you can see, it has made a duplicate of that block. So if you wanna delete that, you can click remove block, All right? So again, more options, you can insert before or insert after. What that means is if you click it, you will insert a brand new block before or after. So like you, you're seeing here, there's a lot of options. You can either click here, you can either click here, or you can simply click on the block and click on insert before. You can also edit as HTML. So for those of you who are more advanced and you don't really like how things are laid out here, let's say I want to go to the quote section or maybe let's do a paragraph. So I'm gonna add a paragraph up here so let's add a paragraph. This is a paragraph. And let's say for example that I wanna add like a JavaScript code or a HTML code. What you do is you click on that block, click here, click edit as HTML, and you simply enter the HTML. And of course when you're done, you just click this and you click edit visually to go back to the visual editor. So the visual editor is basically kind of a, what you see is what you get. And this is more so that you can see it, what it looks like to the end user. And the HTML code is the code in the back. All right, so you can add reusable blocks. So you basically can create blocks that can be reused again and again. So think about these kind of like templates. So this could be like template one and you click save. All right. So if we click plus here 
and you go down to reusable right here, you can see that template one is here. So if we click on that, you're able to add that here. So this is very, very convenient, especially if you have certain elements that you like to repeat over and over and over again, and you want to go to a different post or a different page and add that specific element to that page without having to redo everything. All right. So that is very convenient. So that's that. We're not really going to go in too much depth over here because we'll go in more depth in a minute in terms of the blocks and the, the actual settings of the block. Now, if you go over here, if you click on add image or these are kind of like quick things. And a lot of times these here are elements that you have added in the past. So if you're the person who adds a lot of images, you could click just here, click add image. And there you go. So you simply, you can either upload the image or you can click on media library, or you can insert from a URL. So if you have an image that is already hosted, you can simply enter the URL here. So what's cool about Gutenberg is as you can see, it gives you several different options. So there's not really just one way of doing things. There are actually several ways of doing things. Now from a newbie standpoint, that might look complex because you might be thinking, why is this here? Why is this here? Why is this here? But the reality is it's trying to make things more convenient for you. So let's go further down and uh, we'll put this down here. We'll click plus. And the most used are not really the most used that other people use but the most used that you use. So that's kind of nice because it really customizes the blocks for you. So as you begin to use it, it begins to get smarter and it knows what you're doing and it knows what you like to do. So if we scroll down further, these are the blocks here and we'll go in more depth. I'm going to go in depth on the common blocks, the formatting blocks and the layout elements. But like I said, the widgets are a little bit more advanced, but short code is basically if you have a plugin and they give you a short code and they say, add the short code to your page. So if you were to do that, you click on short code and you would simply add the short code here. Now, back in the day when you had the classic editor, you would have to go into the editor. You would have to go into like either HTML view or sometimes view and add the short code there. So what this does, it allows you to kind of see this structure. Now, since we've added several blocks already, if we go back to the top under block navigation, we can actually see how our blocks are set up. So you can see that at the top, I've got heading, I've got quote, I've got two reusable blocks. I've got list, paragraph, gallery, image, and short code. Now, if I click on one of these, like let's say I'll click on list, it will go straight to that block. So as time goes on and you begin to add more blocks because maybe your page is very, very long and it has maybe 20 or 30 blocks, it's going to be a pain to actually have to scroll through it. So that feature in itself is very convenient as you can see here. So if I say, okay, uh, I just want to edit uh, really quickly the image right here. It'll go straight to the image. So that is a really cool pro. So a lot of pros here. Um, there are a few cons, but a lot of pros in general. All right. So now that we've explained the blocks and the different categories of blocks and how you can apply the blocks to the editor and how you can move things around, how you can make it look like the way you want to make it. Let's move on to the next video.